Katze. So let's see how many uh, we are here. Oh, this is completely new view. Everyone is sitting, looks like. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, aloha, everyone. Aloha. Uh, Hi, Arjun. Hi, everyone. So we are kind of had to reset the this trip meeting and we started. Uh, last month, we had kind of uh, overview meeting. And this week um, we have some progress. And so what I would like to do is start from the very beginning uh, where we were last year, actually, more than a year ago. And um, let me share quickly. Um, definitely I'm not very prepared today, but I do have the information what we need. So. Okay, this is where we were last week, um, last year. Uh, we discussed about international service trip in Nepal, and then we re we rescheduled to December. And just a background, if any of you are not very familiar, so in 2020, two years, more than two years, almost three years ago, maybe uh, two and a half years ago, exactly, uh, very early 2020. Um, at that time. Um, DG elect, or now it's a past PDG already. Naomi uh, discussed with me and James and other international service team members about and express her um, interest to do very impactful and hands on international service projects in Nepal. And we formed a Nepal working group, and the group had so many discussions, and we came up to uh, global grants. Um, so um, but the global grants are actually different from service project. We I'll explain in the next one. And then the, the project we formulate it were uh, having hospital, that's the, uh, the ventilator one and the basic education in a couple of um, uh, high schools in Nepal. So the, the basic education project is our district sponsor grant, uh, global grant. As far as I know, this was the first district sponsor global grant we did. Uh, not particularly club for the whole district. Uh, I know many, uh, all the global grants, we use DDF, that's why it's a district sponsor as well. But this one is particularly uh, district sponsor. Um, uh, so in this one, what I'll talk is a little bit explain about the global grant and how service project is related, if any of you are not familiar with, and then on the talk about this, um, the travel a like, little bit. So I'll make it very brief. Um, I know all of you are aware, uh, so we give it to foundation. Um, anything we give it to uh, on the foundation and the, the, the it's, here is the mission of the Rotary Foundation. One of the is alleviate uh, poverty uh, and uh, the peace through. So we have different focus areas, but these are sort of uh, related to each other. And that's a, um, a Rotary's mission as well. And the and the, um, you know in your club your foundation chair or someone must be always encouraging to give it to the foundation. Um, so where does the money goes? The the money uh, this is old slide. It's actually 47.5, 47.5. They changed two years ago. Um, that goes to almost 50 percent, 47.5. It comes to our district, and then the only way we use that is using the doing the the global grant. Otherwise, we lose that money. And also the half of the almost half 47.5% stays in the um, with the Rotary Foundation. And that also the only way we can use is by doing the global grant. So that's why the global grant is important in order to um, meet the mission of the Rotary as well as also maximize the use of our donation. Um, so all of you are familiar with the district grants. The, the global grants is a little different. It has to be a little uh, more than 30,000 and it has all sort of uh, requirements. Um, it has to be one of the seven uh, focus areas, rotaries. Uh, it has to have a measurable uh, outcome. 
and uh, things like that. So, um, so since I, I mentioned there are two global grants in Nepal, and, and I'll just give you an idea. Uh, I know all of you are familiar. So Nepal is kind of a sandwich between in uh, China and uh, India. It's a tiny country, but uh, this Google Maps was better. Um, and the uh, giant China and the, and India. So this is Nepal here, and the Bhutan is very close to. Um, it's not really border. There is India in between, but very close to Nepal. And it's a, it's a landlocked country. Um, so the government is a federal parliamentary republic uh, system. Um, so uh, the traditionally majority of the people um, um, who are outside the big cities are subsistence farmer. So I mentioned two global grants. One is the basic education. So this basic education is again the, the our district sponsor. Uh, it's on the uh, uh, town called Damoli. That's uh, on the way from Kathmandu to Pokhara. Uh, Kathmandu is the capital, and the Pokhara is another big uh, tourist city. Um, so on the way, there is a town called Damoli, uh, not really very far from Kathmandu. Um, and then from Damoli, this Chundar, uh, the water project we did is about uh, thirty minutes from this village. So. And the, uh, the, the global grant uh, part is to improve quality of education by providing um, science lab equipment, uh, e-learning, teachers training, uh, adult literacy, literacy. The reason the science lab equipments are important in these uh, schools are these, both, both of these uh, schools are uh, vocational schools. Um, apparently, 40% uh, of the girls who go to that schools are so-called untouchable. Um, so according to constitution, there, it does not exist on such a well things caste system, but it's embedded in the, in the, in the culture. Um, that's why it's, uh, um, you can see it's uh, pretty um, common in the, particularly in the rural settings. Um, so these schools, mm -hmm. since it's a vocational school, um, at the end, when they graduate, they spend extra one year and they get a vocational degree. And once they graduate, they are uh, prepared already ready for the, for the job. And uh, so the two of the uh, school, one is veterinary science, um, more related to agriculture, and another is more on engineering, serving, uh, that kind of job. So, <clears throat> and because of that, since they, as they graduate, uh, they are ready for the job. One of the primary goal of this is to reduce uh, gender-based and caste-based disparity. So the total, um, the money was forty-six thousand. I'm talking about still on the global grant. Um, so the global grant was forty-six thousand. Uh, our clubs, Japan, and then DDF, and then the Rotary Foundation included for money and the money already sent and actually some of the equipment we already bought. Uh, so the e-learning equipment is pre really uh, prepared. Let's see if uh, Durga is here or not. Um, so, um, so we have this already um, uh, prepared and actually Durga is going again in August uh, to make sure things are all done properly. Um, and so the main grant includes um, equipment and the training, uh, particularly teachers training. And then, so uh, this is a project uh, committee. The, uh, so we are the committee here on the, from the district and in Nepal, these are the, the host committee. And Durga is actually uh, uh, associate dean um, in Louisiana. And so he is um, from the nearby village. So he's very familiar about the project and he's going with us. And um, this one is from the, the old slide. Um, I have shown this uh, several times. This is the, uh, the village we did like three years ago, um, drinking water. In this village, this is a typical house in the village. Uh, this is only 30 minutes from the schools um, and our project. So these uh, locals, they did not have water. Um, they already have a uh, uh, problem of water, but the 2015, earthquake made the problem worse. So they had to walk um, like two to four hours one way to get water, wait, the water get collected and the carry on the back uh, like this. Um, so, 
And because of that, many people started to migrate in 2016 and 17. Uh, several organizations, including Red Cross and the local government, spent lots of money, uh, total like 500,000 total. Uh, Red Cross spent 200,000, but it all failed, didn't work. So we started this. Um, um, this is uh, originally uh, James is the one who jump started this idea uh, after James Durga and I met. And then after uh, two years or so, uh, the village, um, I don't have the photo now, but I'm sure you have seen the report. They have water, um, running water and starting last November. And after the water, um, actually we started to seeing lots of reverse migration. Several families already moved back to the village. The school um, one time used to have like more than 100 students. Uh, it came down to 12 or 15 and now already uh, seven students added and there are 12 students going to be added starting in August. So um, basically this project turned out to be a community uh, the helping to survive this uh, community. And we will have opportunity to visit this uh, for sure. And the other project is actually um, the another district on the way. This hospital has like 250,000 people serve this. Um, uh, this hospital serves more than 250,000 people. Um, when the COVID started, they did not have a ventilator at all. And uh, so we are the first one, we provided ventilators and then the train, the doctor, and then the hospital already has uh, ventilators. So uh, we will have chance to visit this. And this project is complete. The report is already um, submitted, but they haven't approved, but they will approve soon. So now it comes to the service project. So the, the globe, the service project is just like um, the service project here, international service project, we go and we work on a project. Um, it doesn't have to be always related with the global grant. It can be separate, but this in this case, this is related with the, the global grant we are doing. So, um, so the things we can do um, in Nepal are uh, one is teachers training. And then the teachers training, it will be uh, three group, uh, agriculture and environment group. Uh, so mostly we're working on the, using the equipment we bought uh, or we will buy before the, we go there. Um, the, uh, like soil test, water test, uh, crop production, um, these kind of things. And the second is the uh, livestock management. Um, I know it sounds more like uh, science and things like that, but it's not gonna be more complicated science at all. These are gonna be, uh, many things going to be like equipment we can use it as a black box and um, um, so the another is a survey and the engineering uh, remember i mentioned that these schools are vocational schools so they get a vocational license so but the the since we're buying uh, pretty good equipment um andy is here andy is in the engineer he just joined and so the surveying engineering is very important part in developing countries and so the, in the teachers training, these are teachers. Um, so we have uh, trainers in Nepal as well. And also, uh, but um, uh, we provide more. Um, uh, so make sure the, um, uh, the, the material they use are standard and things like that. So Andy will lead this. Um, and the another is uh, adult literacy. So when it, uh, basically this is the science literacy. Many of the um, locals in this area, they are um, uh, farmers, mostly illiterate. Um, one of the questions they ask is when they go to school, uh, that's something I experience all the time. The, my mom used to tell me when I was fourth grade, I could read a book. And she kept telling uh, my dad and me, all of us that, uh, or, you know, our son can read a book. Why does he need to go to school? He's done, you know. Uh, so he should stay home and then do the, the farming and things like that. So the many of these, they, because the, they don't see the real application of what their kids learn, um, they are more uh, hesitant to send their schools to, uh, kids to school. So by doing this, what we're going to do is use the agriculture, uh, environment, climate change, that kind of equipment and to do, for example, we work with the local and, uh, you know, um, uh, take the soil sample and then, then the, um, do the, all the, um, look at the nutrients in the soil 
uh, and that will be directly related to them and so that they understand what why we're doing that why their kids go to school so these the format is um so they are very prepared in nepal um but i missed the last meeting this is from the last time so on um, the community works of this is going to be three locations and the 20 participants in each location um So another thing, um, this is uh, pretty much the, the, the hardware part is already pretty much done in Nepal is e-learning. Um, so they already bought like a computers, projectors and things like that. And to so that um, uh, when uh, needed, uh, like uh, the COVID cases, they can run the classroom from the school. Uh, so in this one, the training, what we'll do is uh, teach them like uh, how to use Zoom, on the, on the messaging, Google Docs, screen sharing, uh, file conversion, recording, these kind of things. Uh, earlier we talked, and I know Mariko is here. Uh, this is Mariko's idea and passion and the tree planting. Um, so mango trees and things like that. I had to do the strike through because it's a December is not really ideal time, but in similar to in this line, definitely we'll do something, um, uh, so, so for example, like a garden cleaning or uh, things like that. So D Durga has more idea. I think he forgot today. Um, another thing we had is actually um, Jonathan. Um, this is a, a last year, we uh, two years ago, we discussed about uh, the, the, the solar project. And there is a, a really um, interesting organization in Nepal. Uh, it's called Innovation Center. Um, they have done lots of, they spend lots of um, resources on their innovation. And then one of the things that we're trying to do is solar um, suitcase. Uh, the, uh, it's, it's actually, I think that James introduced me, solar suitcase is a, like a solar thing. It comes in a suitcase and you can use at school, in hospital, run the, all the equipment in the, in the uh, night um, um, in the places where there is no electricity and but it's expensive it's cost like almost three thousand um, here but the innovation center in nepal uh, uh, jonathan is here he donated three thousand and with that i believe so uh, with that three thousand um they bought all the equipment from other places like china and then um, i mean the parts and they already prepared uh two um, the, the solar, instead of suitcase, they gave a Nepali name like solar doko. Jonathan, you know doko, right? Right. Can you explain what it is? <laughs> well, it... Doko, it's something they carry on the back. Yeah, thanks. And so, and they have it not only they have the, the already prepared solar things and now they have the technology they can make more cheaper and they are planning actually um to do a bigger scale um they are working on it um so we haven't really donated this to any places we can um there are um, several places um it's not really a super big project but uh, since jonathan is there at that time we'll hand over to some other uh, school or hospital um, so the, this one is uh, the, the, the water project is the site we will uh, have opportunity to visit. Um, so this is more like a tour because now they already have running water. And then the other part is going to be classroom teaching. Uh, some of you are teacher. I know Liz used to be teacher, something like that. And then um, more passionate about teaching. This is about te mostly I think English is the most uh, useful in Nepal. Um, so there are many math teachers, science teachers already, but the English, uh, the proper English, um, uh, that's very important. And then the, uh, this is English teaching. We can just, we just arrange in a certain classroom, depending on your interest, which level you like to do, uh, we'll arrange this. And then the, this one is, um, Mariko is also interested and Mary is interested. And then this is a, more about cultural mix up. And uh, once they mention about the, the, the cultural thing, I um, also have one more idea. This one, the, um, 
So one of the thing, uh, just for fun, also, um, um, we I know someone who is a professional uh, choreographer. Uh, I'm planning to do like maybe like um, from those routine we go from here teach hula to those local who are interested, and then also learn local uh, culture, local dance, and then make uh, some sort of like a music video at the end. So this is not like super project; it's for more for fun. Yeah. Um, so the the local dance, uh, for example, this is just a sample. Um, so I did play before. But okay. Looks like my my uh, sound is not shared. Probably I did not. Um, But you can see the, the how the locals their um, their outfits and things like that. These are very ethnic people. So some of the logistics um, I did uh, the the flyer Naomi sent uh, had some information. Um, flight to Kathmandu that was one of the most challenges. Uh, there are several options. The good news is. Uh, my favorite, my favorite is Korean, uh, Korean Airlines, and they are starting flight uh, starting in August. Um, so going from the the the, the East Pacific, uh, that's um, always uh, faster and better route. Um, so let's see, Elvira is not here, right? Okay. So, um, so flight will find more information, but uh, only thing is Korean airline now, it seems more expensive, but um, I'm assuming it's gonna be much, the price will be lower. Now is like 2,400 or so, but I have used Korean Air several times. I have paid more than 2,400 as well, because it's really, they provide free hotel, a really good quality hotel and meals and things like that. And very convenient, comfortable. Um, you fly in the morning from here and get uh, Korea in the evening, and then you go to hotel and spend a night tomorrow. Following morning, you have flight to Kathmandu, uh, six to seven hours, and then you are in Kathmandu. That's very very convenient one. That's great. Um, yeah, I'm sure Jonathan used it, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, but there are going to be more other options as well. Uh, uh, Japan Airlines. Uh, and the Hong Kong, Cathay Pacific. So Cathay Pacific has a flight from here to uh, Hong Kong. I think they stop in Japan. And then from Hong Kong, there is a direct flight and they call it Dragon Airline, but they are a sister organization, they are same company. Uh, that's also very convenient. Um, so um, in Nepal, the ground transport, um, there will be already all arranged. There will be someone to pick you up at the airport and bring to your uh, hotel and things like that. Uh, you don't need to worry anything at all about that. Uh, so the hotels in Kathmandu, you, you got all sort of hotels, uh, really good and really cheap and whatever you like. It's not a problem at all. Uh, since it's not going to be probably like will be 30 people or so, there is gonna be someone in Kathmandu um, who you can communicate one-to-one -one and arrange your trip. Um, the meals, uh, so the during the service project like that week, um, those hotels in Damoli where we're going, uh, they're not gonna be very fancy hotel, just the um, it's kind of medium, uh, sort of like a um, three-star hotel or 2.5, a three-star hotel in Waikiki, but it still is gonna have um, AC or a heater. AC you don't need probably that time, the heater for that for sure and hot water. Um, they provide a breakfast and dinner. Um, and so the trip readiness, uh, James is here. One of the things is medical prepared uh, safety security and it's a James word actually, he might wanna add something. Um, uh, the main important thing we need to make sure is you have six month valid passport um, the before your return flight. Not when you leave, uh, the date they'll check is your return. 
you have to have like six month valid. Uh, the visa in Nepal, you can get in arrival. I believe there is an online uh, system. Um, you can apply before you leave, but you can do it at the airport too. Uh, probably good idea to carry one photo. I think the, the there they have machine to get a photo as well. So, uh, but I'll provide more detailed information in the next meeting. And the flyer um, has some of the frequently asked questions, and you saw that. Um, and also, thank you those who did this survey. Um, let me open the survey here. So far, I have. Uh, nine responses. Um, and then the, the club information. And so, yeah, um, so once more people uh, do the survey next time, definitely I will um, summarize this survey and share with you. With that, maybe um, we should go for question and answer. Let me unshare. Hey, Arvid, this is Wes Munn. I'm yes, just Wes. wondering, you know, if you wanted to utilize my public health, healthcare delivery expertise and add a um, healthcare component to the trip, since, you know, that's in my area of expertise. I can do a health delivery survey if you like. I can do you know, whatever you want me to do there. Um, I'm not a good teacher, but I am, you know, do, I'm good at what I do. So I leave that open to you if you want to expand the project at no cost, because I pretty much will be working for free. So, you know, think about it and let me know. I can come sure, up. Sure, is it about doing like a survey or? Well, you know, I, I know in the earlier meetings, we talked about their delivery of services in terms of the, um tertiary and primary care services and i would just wonder you know way back when we talked about the equipment that the hospital received and mm -hmm. I, I thought maybe if you wanted to add a outpatient clinical service component i could help you with that mm. sure i think um let me talk to them as well, and also I'll call you back for more detail. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think Dr. Ham would be. Um, yeah, I think that James might have better understanding. James, do you think yeah, what I can be... do, yeah. Okay, I'm just thinking if I'm going to go along for the ride, I'm going to do something really constructive. Yeah, hey, hey Wes, um, hey, awesome to have you on. Um, honestly, I, I like to go on these trips and not do my job, honestly. I like to kind of stretch out and maybe do something that's not my expertise, but. Um, you know what we could do is we could reach out and uh, and see. Obviously, we want to sure. do what's uh, you know you know what 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 they want. And uh, I, I think it might be interesting for us to maybe just me and you, maybe some people can make a trip to that hospital where we donated some of that um, ICU equipment, and mm -hmm. then maybe even just do a little report back, you know, and uh, maybe even help uh, help with the actual global grant report. That's something that we could do, and then we could actually talk about the uh, sustainability. I don't know the maybe the public health ramifications of that. That maybe some right. interesting we could work on, and then we could actually potentially even uh, get more data from that and maybe even there might be another needs assessment that needs to get done. We could sure. actually just maybe tackle another global grant, maybe another a club in our district wants to do another global grant and we can have it set up for them. So that'll be kind of okay. something we could do. But yeah, but um, yeah, I think more to follow, but I think just mostly from from exactly what Arjun said is we just need to make sure that um, that we just touch base with them. And I have a friend actually there right now, uh, this guy Ajay Bhatt, who's uh, uh, also a good friend of Arjun's. He's been there since... Um, May he'll be there through December, and we're gonna we're gonna hope to meet up with him. But he's actually setting up an EMS uh, dispatch um, uh, setup there in a, oh, a nearby okay. town called Dulatel, and so he'll be there through December. So it might be some fun for us to go there and check out and maybe help with that at the end and uh, and touch base. But I'll, I'll connect us all, and um, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up because uh, my wife's coming in along and she's in town, and she may want to get involved too. So I'll, I'll definitely kind of see what healthcare people want to do. Well, see, James, the difference is I've been retired for three years, so I don't work no more. So you, for you, yeah. So, so you got the, you, you have the energy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, have the, you have the time and energy to do stuff. So we're looking forward to it. Well, love to have on board. Arjun. Yes. 
Can you just tell us uh, exact dates we are uh, talking about when we leave Honolulu and then come back to Honolulu? And then also oh, um, the potential of the Bhutan, adding the Bhutan, and then if, you know, what sort of dates? Sure. Um, let me ask the, find the, um, the one Naomi sent the flyer. We need to be in Kathmandu on um, December 10th, Saturday. Now, now, would you like to share uh, if you have a handy? I need to find it. So. Well, um, uh, oh, the flyer. Now, I'm looking at my calendar. So um, oh, okay. we need to be in Kathmandu on December 10th. And so if people are flying on their own, just meet us there uh, December 10th for the dinner. So we have our orientation. If we're flying together, then um, I think we're gonna we're trying to leave on December eighth um, to get there on the tenth, and then the project is going to be the twelfth through the sixteenth, and then if we go to um, Bhutan, it'll be the eighteenth through the twentieth. Right, Arjun? Yeah. So if we come back, you know, direct. If I come back directly from Kathmandu. I can leave on the 17th. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So I think the things to do next is um, we need to finalize the, the ticket. Probably um, better to wait through August, I believe. Um, and uh, from the from the Nepal side, they are very prepared. Um, and from next month or in August, once um, we complete this survey. Uh, we know what, uh, who likes to do what, and we will at some point um, uh, connect with the coordinators in Nepal as well. Any more questions or? Hey Arjun, it's Andy. Hi, I know I've seen it somewhere, but could we share again at some point the list of the equipment that's associated with the different um, efforts, just so we know what we're doing? Sure. Yeah. You you want me to share now or later? Uh, later's fine. Just okay. at some point by August, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll send you all the um the the proposal original proposal has no, all the links. No, because no, I totally forgot about our um walk. Arjun, I just now checked the um, the State Department thing, and uh -huh. it's uh, that Nepal is level two, so it's better. Exercise. I think it, it is better. It, it is definitely better uh, yeah. in terms of COVID, right? No, no, this is you know, the, the the travel advisory. The exercise okay. increased caution rather than reconsider travel, so it's okay. now level two. Because I think in your presentation, you mentioned level three. Oh, did I? OK. I, yeah. yeah, it was. Sorry about that. Thank you, Marco. Yeah, really so appreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so Arjun, what's our next step? So next step is, um, I think, um, so we, we need to start uh, those who are uh, traveling independently, so they can arrange the 
ticket, but those in the group, I, I don't know. Um, Elvira is here, right? Yes. She like to. Here. Unfortunately, Elvira is on the phone right now. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what, I guess Arjun, um, this is Glenn from West Honolulu. Yes, and sir. my question is, um, for those of us, that, well, for me, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it on the 10th. Um, is it okay if I arrive a day later and then I, and I try to find my way to the location? Um, yeah, that's totally fine. You will definitely miss uh, three days. Yeah. Um, the only difficult uh, part is the, I mean, the additional part we have to do is arrange travel from Kathmandu to the, um, to the site. Okay. And yeah, it's not a big problem. We will arrange something. Okay. And if there's additional costs, then of course, you know, I'll, I'll, um, I'll pay for that. So. Yeah. I think that if you use a, like a regular bus, uh, I'll, I will have someone in Kathmandu pick you up at the airport and then, um, uh, and drop you off at the like bus stop or something like that bus station. It's a you can find a really nice buses too, actually like tour bus. Okay, thank you. And if we need because of the time, um, let's say you get there in the uh, the four p.m. something like that. There is no bus and for that day, and you decide to go there uh, instead of staying in Kathmandu. So in that case, we have to arrange something, a uh, private car or something like that. That's, that's all it's possible. Okay. Well, I plan to arrive there in the morning. So um, okay. I will, yeah, I'll, I'll inform you. So sorry, I asked the Hulu Marathon to change the date, but they said no. So. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, I have signed up too, but I don't I know. know. So. I have a virtual option too. Uh, I might yeah. do virtually actually this year. I'll see you there. So. Yeah. Okay, so uh, um, Arjun, when is the next meeting? Um, let's see, next meeting. Last week of July, I might be traveling. Um, either first week of August. Okay, what day? Do you think we should keep the same date and time? Has anybody mentioned to you that they can it's not attend because it's Thursday? No, no one said anything. Because if we change, um, it might not work for some of us. Okay, so August 3rd at 4.30. August, August 4 is a Thursday, right? Oh, 4th, okay, August 4th, 4.30. Okay, by that time, uh, we should have maybe the, some idea of the um, airfare, yeah? Airfare for the group? Yeah. I think so. We should maybe finalize by, by August, I think. Okay. Um, so, since James here, uh, do we add anything? James, there are many, on the, even on the survey, asking about the uh, Bhutan. Come again? Hey, hey Arjun. Uh, are, are you talking to me? Yeah, there are many, uh, some uh, some of the participants, they are asking uh, what's the status of Bhutan. And Alan, for example, yeah, it, it, he- it's, it, it's, it's right now, uh, it's not open right now. So we don't have any information yet. Oh, uh, okay. You know, the, okay. in terms of tourism and uh, yeah, they're still locked down. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's they're already a culturally locked down country. So I think they're using COVID as an excuse to lock down more, but this is my okay. social commentary. Yeah. And if it um, opens, do you already have plan or you will make plan after they open? I'm, I'm going to have to wait until I make plans because, uh, yeah, that, that Wilderness Medicine Project is still on standby too. So we're just trying to coordinate a bunch of things. So I, I think at best, I could probably uh, coordinate with the Rotary Club there and get some projects going. Um, but yeah, nothing that I'm doing right now as, as I speak. Okay. Because honestly, because uh, December is a hard time to do projects, and we do a lot of agriculture projects there, so it's just going to be a real hard time. Uh, we can do some, um, and even like water projects are kind of hard to do during the winter, right? So, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll come up with something. I'll, uh, uh, we'll see who's interested first, and then uh, depends on kind of when it opens up to, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, thanks, James. It helps. So, 
And another thing, uh, the, if any of you have not seen the flyer, uh, the, the estimated uh, average um, uh, daily uh, cost is about $120. That includes a uh, hotel, uh, meal, and the local transportation, everything. Um, but in Kathmandu, if you choose more uh, luxury hotel, it might be more. So, and, and the airfare, we don't know usually, it's, as I mentioned earlier, when I check Korean airline, it's a 2,400, um, but there are other cheaper. Um, if anyone is traveling without anything, the, the cheapest one, I think is the Malaysian Air, uh, Air Asia. It's really, really cheap, but um, they don't allow even a, a, like a, the hand carry. And so uh, as now we mentioned, so what, so we are actually working on the uh, 12 to 16, December 12 to 16, but we plan to meet on Saturday, December 10. Um, so, so we'll have a um, dinner and some info session on, on that day. Um, so, so the, yes. Excuse me, if Bhutan does not open up, does that mean we're heading home on the 17th? Say again. Okay. Um, if Bhutan does not open, heading back on 17th, is that your question? Yeah. Would the group be heading back on the 17th if Bhutan um, doesn't open or the yeah, 18th? Sorry. Yeah, 17th or 18th. Uh, but if any of you choose to do something else like uh, going to Pokhara or um, Chiton, Chiton is a national park um, um, where that's very close to where Jonathan spent some time in Nepal and he is more familiar than I am. Uh, so the, the um, Rotarians, many of you met, uh, we visited from Kathmandu at our district conference. Guneshwar, he is from there and he is willing to arrange a trip, uh, I mean the tour, um, one day or two days, really nice tour. Um, so, and uh, also Pokhara is a very nice city. Um, so just uh, less than uh, about an hour from that this place. So if any of you want to spend some other days uh, in Pokhara, so we can arrange too. So. And from Nepal, um, at least two district governors, past district governors, uh, they say they are uh, happy to join. So probably they will. Um, so one of the concerns many people ask is, isn't December cold? December is pretty cold in Kathmandu. How cold it gets is the temperature gets as close as, it doesn't really snow, um, like almost like freezing temperature. It goes to freezing, uh, but the, uh, the daily journal change is very high. Um, so even in the coldest day in the morning, uh, coldest morning, the afternoon temperature gets uh, pretty comfortable. Um, but Kathmandu is pretty cold in the morning and evening. Uh, the place we are going, Damoli, is not. Damoli is uh, fairly, it's definitely colder than here uh, in the morning and evening, but the daytime, it's almost like here now. Um, about the training, all the trainings, they are working on the manual in Nepal. Um, they will prepare manual and then the, the roles and things like by September, all the participants will know uh, what is the role, what they're doing and things like that. Um, we will check on the survey, um, your interest and try to fit in. So and another thing. Yes, Can please. we get a list of um, what we're missing, what kind of skills we're missing so that um, if we have, we know people who can fill those spots, we can, um, you know, all reach out? Uh, sure, let me see the survey if I can do it quick. So, so, so let's we um, have send one person classroom teaching and we have one person cultural. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's send the whole list out to everybody and then they can. Okay, I'll do that. Help. I'll find a way to summarize this and send it to, okay. Oh yeah, I do. I do teachers training, livestock. We don't have anyone on the livestock management training. 
um, everything else, interestingly, we do have, and there are lots of interest on classroom teaching. Okay. Um, uh, isn't there somebody on the Kona side? Or let's see, nobody from Kona. Sharon, it, um, wasn't there somebody who had a farm with animals? Oh, can't hear you. Off the top of my head, I can't remember who has that. Um, but, um, you know, we could do some checking around. Okay. Okay, Arjun. Sharon, really quick. Does that person who's the livestock specialist have to be a Rotarian? Can we get like a teacher no, who teaches yeah. agriculture at a, at a public school or something? Is that even a possibility or we don't even want to entertain that? Oh, um, the question was for me. So no, it doesn't have to be Rotary. Anyone can be a volunteer. Can volunteer. I'm sorry, did I miss another part of the question or? No, that was my question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are we good, Arjun? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Okay. So same same Zoom link for um, August. Okay, yeah. Okay, th yeah, thank you everyone. And so we, we have, you took the picture, right? I mean, just to make sure we're what? Took, took a picture. Yeah. You want me to take a picture? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, everybody smile. Okay. <laughs> See, do you guys like this um, immersive? This is immersive. And so they've got some other ones like this one. Oh, that, that same one. Um, there's this one. Well, I think that it's not displaying name of everyone. Yeah, it um, doesn't. Yeah. It takes time to use to probably it's nicer. Naomi, can can we see the names of the, the participants in this format? No, you gotta go back to gallery. Ah. Right here. Oh. I like I like that one better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ditto. His name. This one is we are used to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we're good. Um, Arjun, right now the in and uh, can you add anything on the travel? <laughs> no, sounds good, Arjun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone, and Thanks, see you. Yeah, first week of August. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye. bye.